Views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hola everyone, welcome to Open, the one and only show bringing the best of the Bronx, New York and the world straight to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host Cafe Con Leche every Friday. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Lady Things Off will shed light on heart disease as we celebrate American Heart Month and learn more about the American Heart Association and Go Red for Women movement. After that, we'll sit down with renowned poet and playwright Jesus Papoleto Melendez to discuss his new book, Borracho, Love Poems and Other Acts of Madness. Then we'll learn the latest on Lehman Center for the Performing Arts star-studded lineup for the 2020 season and their newly $15.4 million renovated building. And later on in the show, Bobby C. brings us an up-to-date with the latest headlines in the world of sports. And lastly, Hispanic musical artist Sam P. El Conde joins the show as this week's Open Artist Spotlight with a flavorful performance on our Open Artist stage. So uh, sit back y prepárate. All this and more is headed your way because now we are officially open. Welcome back to Open, everyone. I'm Rina Valentin, your host Cafe Con Leche for the next hour. You know, we're always inviting you to get social with us online, that is. Check us out on Instagram at Broxnet TV and like us on Facebook at Open Broxnet Television. And of course, while you're there, don't forget to follow me too at Rina Valentin. It's American Heart Month and it's National Wear Red Day, a national campaign bringing awareness to cardiovascular disease amongst women. And according to the CDC, heart disease is it's the leading cause of death for men and women. And joining us to tell us more about the campaign, Go Red for Women in, in initiative and give us some prevention tips. And we welcome Mount Sinai cardiologist, uh, Dr. Anna Anu, excuse me, Anu Lala, and American Heart Association, uh, Shannon Morris. Hello and welcome, ladies. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you for being here. I'm like in my glory. I get to, I have a doctor in the house <laughs> called Dr. Lala. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, your heart doctor. Huh? So uh, let's share a little bit about, I mean, I, of course, I, I'm going to make light of the situation. However, it's important for us to bring this into light mm -hmm. and um, and just basically share with our community, uh, especially in the community of people of color, you know, heart disease is really up there. Let's just, if you would open up with just sharing some of the statistics, that, that would be fabulous. Sure, I think, and thanks for asking. I think the reason this campaign is so critically important is because women typically think of themselves as being plagued with breast cancer ovarian cancer, gynecologic issues, and when in fact heart disease is actually the leading cause of death in women. And I think every time women hear that in the audience or patients or general public, they're surprised to hear that because they don't think of themselves as being vulnerable to heart disease in the same way that they think of themselves as vulnerable to breast cancer or other sort of OBGYN or GYN related issues. As a doctor, why do you think that is? We can always speculate. Mm -hmm. I think um, we typically think of, you know, women are providers, um, especially in um, our, sort of our minority communities in particular. We are focused on our families. We're focused on being go, go, go all the time. And oftentimes we ignore our symptoms. And I think that's the critical point is that we often brush things off. Right. Oh, I'm short of breath walking up the subway stairs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just might be out of shape. Or uh, I felt a little something here, but I'm just going to ignore it. I'm probably just stressed out. I need to worry about my children, my partner, um, my job, putting on food on the table, et cetera, et cetera. And I think even though these seem like stereotypical uh, tasks that we take on, they are a reality. And I think women very 
frequently forget about themselves and forget to check in with themselves. And thank you for sharing that because it's true. You know, mm -hmm. just in general, right? We, we think we're like Wonder Women, mm -hmm. all of us, all <laughs> of us, because we're like the, the the umptenth power of multitaskers, right, right? right? It's kind of like almost instinctive. And so the American Heart Association is uh, loaning themselves to assisting the community with prevention, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so let's share a little bit about these partnerships that you've uh, established within the community. Sure. So um, I, I head our senior, I head our community impact team, which we are the the feet to the mission, I would say. So our work is really to put our overall goal into action. Our 2030 goal right now is to make sure that people are living healthier lives for more years of their lives. So we partner with a few different organizations in the Bronx particularly. We started the first two year-long farmers markets. The Bronx was the only borough that did not have a year-long farmers market. With 1.7 million people without access to healthy food, this was pivotal. We needed to do this. We partner up with Grow NYC, also with our AHA board member, Rose Cayola, and we were able to get this started in November. Another good initiative that we just started that we're hoping to bring to the Bronx is our library loaner program where we're now able to, um, folks are now able to go to the Far Rockaway Library and loan out a blood pressure cuff as easily as they can a book. And so um, this initiative, right, and while we're bringing it into the forefront in February, it's something that I think is a conversation that needs to be continuously had uh, on a preventative level, right? Mm -hmm. So. We already discussed from a psychological perspective what I, I guess would uh, prevent somebody from taking the, the steps to get it checked out. So how far should a person go and what, what would you say are symptoms to say, go get yourself checked out? Right. I think, thank you for asking that. I think the, we give all these scary statistics. But the reality of the matter is, is that a lot of this can be prevented, as you're saying. And so little things, little changes can make a big difference. Eating healthier. Now, what does that mean? Simple, simple facts like instead of frying your meat, your fish, vegetables, bake, broil them. Uh, when you're putting even salad dressing on your salad, put it, ask for it on the side. Take the salt shaker away from the table. Mm -hmm. You'll be less inclined to pour salt on your food, which we all love. So I have a question for you yeah, on salt. Please. Is there a difference between regular salt and Himalayan salt as well as sea salt? That's a great question, and we get that a lot. There's actually no difference in the sodium content hmm. of those three. Uh, what we often tell patients to do, particularly patients with cardiovascular disease or on the end spectrum with heart failure, to limit their sodium to about 2,000 milligrams a day. And really the key there, and this goes for everyone, is just get in the habit of looking at labels. Whatever you're taking in, look at the label of it. See what mm -hmm. kind of sodium content is in there. See what kind of sugar content is in there. And with that simple adjustment in your daily practice, you become very conscientious of what you're putting into your body. And that simple change in your practice can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And so really quickly, because I want to talk to Shannon a little further before this segment ends, in sodium, how much, how, what role I would say sodium play, does sodium play in uh, creating a heart condition? So that's a pretty controversial mm -hmm. uh, subject. Um, there's, what we do know is once you do have cardiovascular disease, limiting your sodium is essential. In terms of prevention, I think being mindful in general is a good rule of thumb. Okay. Particularly in terms of prevention, there's more data and more evidence to support limiting bad fats, trans mm -hmm. fats, um, and saturated fats. So and so there's like, more data there. Right. It's like everything in life, everything in moderation. Balance. Don't overdo it. Right. right. Mm -hmm. That is the formula of life is balance. <laughs> sure. And so before we go, Shannon, uh, I see you're wearing a red jacket. I yes. got the memo. The uniform, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Good. And so, um, with the Go Red for Women, um, and so let's share a little bit about that because I know the American Heart Association is at the forefront with just bringing this awareness into light, and women are wearing red jackets and wearing red. Doctors got red, I think, right? Yeah, that's it's a red. Shade of red. <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, red, obviously, is because of the heart, but why should people wear it, and what is the actual message that's being presented? Sure, so we're, we're working to build a right awareness. Um, we're celebrating uh, Go, red, uh, Go Red Day today, and also American Heart Month all month, but we want folks to know that, similar to what Dr. Lala said, that 
heart disease is still the leading cause of death for men and women. And so we stand all together wearing red um, to show that we are here fighting the good fight to ensure that people know about this and that we're taking the precautions to live healthier, longer lives. And February 8th is the national, right? Yes. Red, wear red date. So it's being worn all over the United States. That's the goal. That's the goal. Is it February 8th? Yes. Say, is today the 7th or the 8th? It's the 7th. That's a good question. It's the 7th. Oh, my so goodness. So it's the 7th. It's the 7th. Sorry, yes. guys. I, I meant to say February 7th. Jump in the gun. <laughs> but in, in general, every year it's February mm -hmm. 7th. Yeah. So that they can keep record of it. And uh, are there any last words we, we could share with our viewers in guiding them in a, a healthier path? Yeah, I would just say, I, I never got to answer your question before, I think it's really important for all of us, but women in particular, to take the time every day to check in with ourselves mm -hmm. and to, to try and tune in to whether you're not feeling well or whether you are feeling well with your routine activities. And that simple practice, I think, can make a big impact. And so when you say check in, you're, are you referencing uh, meditation and just having that time with self? to understand that your your body, is, it's, it communicates with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly, I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm I a think, meditator, that's there why. There you go, <laughs> I, I mean, I am too, and I really think, I, I can't necessarily ask everyone to do that, but even taking just a moment to check in with yourself on a daily basis, you become more in tune with what your body's trying to tell you. Right, and it's important as you mm -hmm. age, because, you know, unfortunately, the body needs assistance, <laughs> that's and true. that's just the way it is. And thank you so much thank for you. sharing thank you with for us. Me. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us, and making some time to be with us here on set. And Shannon, thank you, Shannon, thank you for your efforts within the community and to the American Heart Association. And you guys, once again, for more information regarding heart disease and prevention, most importantly, visit heart.org. That's www.heart.org. Also, for information on the Go Red for Women initiative, you can visit goredforwomen.org. And on Saturday, February 8th, the 10th annual Bronx Polar Bear Plunge will take place in Orchard Beach. And they're partnered with uh, BronxNet, us, and uh, BronxWorks. Uh, Bronx sites are actually going to gather together to take a plunge into the frigid waters against homelessness, raising financial support for BronxWorks Homelessness Services. And the event begins at 11 a.m. with the big plunge taking place at noon with soup and cocoa provided by Havana Cafe. And this is happening once again on Saturday, February 8th at Orchard Beach to register and for more more information on the polar bear plunge, go to bronxworks.org slash dip against homelessness. We have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll talk about being drunk with love. That's in poem form. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Open Everyone. Our next guest is a poet and playwright from El Barrio, East Harlem, that is, and one of the founding members of the New Yorican poetry movement. And today he's here to tell us about his book of poetry titled Borracho, Love Poems and Other Acts of Madness, a poetic autobiography of 
a hopeless romantic. Joining us to tell us more <laughs> about the, uh, well, the book is based on the ins and outs of love, right? It's love month. Uh, let's welcome poet and playwright Jesus Papoleto Melendez. Hello. Hello. Gracias. Gracias, Rina. Thank you for it's having so me. It's so appropriate. Show. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, you for being red. here. <laughs> well, no, I'm wearing red because it, it's. National Wear Red Day. Go red, go red, right? <laughs> and it's February 7th. I just want to make sure that everybody remembers it's February 7th nationally. And in addition to that, February is the month of love, right? Yep. Valentine's yep. Day. And uh, bueno, mijo, you couldn't have come up with a more appropriate title, Borracho in <laughs> Love Poems. Yep. So let's talk about the inspiration behind that. Uh, well, um, you know, when I was a teenager, my friends used to have me write love poems for their girlfriends. <laughs> I didn't have one, but they did. That's, so, that's cute. <laughs> that's cute. So that's where that all started. I mean, you know, so I was writing since then. So this book has taken 50 years for me to write. Wow. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. It's, uh, uh, I, it's just like a collection of all the love poems I've written during that span. Well, I, well you know, I was writing political poems, poems for the community. So you get to see, an, you know, another side of me. <laughs> A gentler it, side of you? Uh, it's madness. It's madness. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, you know, uh, you know. kind of, sort of, it's a matter of opinion. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, I but uh, it's also about relationships, right. not just mine, but others that I observe, um, things I hear, like, conversations women have had in my presence and and that have evoked um you know serious contemplation on just what happens you know in love men women so yeah it's like the autobiography of a hopeless romantic like you said <laughs> well you know i've had the pleasure of getting a little sneak peek of the manuscript right yeah and um what i have observed in the writing is that uh, while we're sitting here and we're referencing love in relationships it's not just love in relationships it's the uh conversation with self that comes up a lot in in your poems mm. i know i don't mm. know if i gave too much away but no, it's very no, fascinating but, uh, thank you thank you uh, yeah well i think poetry is a conversation with oneself all the time right even if the theme is political or romantic or or whatever, you know, it's like a puzzle that you're trying to figure out emotionally and intellectually. Right, and and I love that, you know, the whole the whole point of it is for it to allude to self-love, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's about relationships and right. or not. But you actually dive into some dark places in some of your pieces, <laughs> which I, I, I find to be brave uh, because that's it. It's going to be published and it's a wrap. Everybody's going to know who you are. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> thanks, thanks. But, well, you know, I've always been honest, you know. Even, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's what it is. I know. know. He's like, I've always been honest. Hey, That's actually yeah. been my problem. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's like, in, uh, yeah, you know, I get it. You know, but anyway. No, it's, it's all good. Movie. It's all good. It's all good, you know. Uh, I happen to know Papoleto for very many years, so th <laughs> the conversation is a little more on the informal <laughs> side because I love him just as he is yes, and just I as he's not. Too. So, Thank And you. we're so glad you're here sharing one of your pieces with us on set. We're going to get the first taste of it. I know you're going to have a poetry book reading uh, and a book release party right. next week, but uh, you're going to give us a little taste today? Okay. I'll read you... Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I really, I, I really like what happened here. I mean, you know, just all together, and the book is translated into Spanish. Oh, nice! So we get that double. So at, at the book party, there will be some poets, some uh, uh, entertainers are going to read in Spanish, and some are going to read in English. All right. So the book itself is it going to have the actual words in English and Spanish? Yeah, right. Or of some in English and some no, are no, in no. Spanish. It's totally translated. It's totally translated. So it's yeah. a bilingual book altogether. Yeah, and they take on another life. Like really, when they translate it, it's very interesting. Uh, um, it's like I've always been writing in Spanish, except I've been doing it in English. I like that. You're such a poet. <laughs> you heard that, right? Did you get that? <laughs> I hope you guys are paying attention. <laughs> I love it. This is open poetry reading. It is open poetry reading with <laughs> the uh, famous uh, Papoleto Melendez. If body were not art, how many paintings then the uncompleted masterpiece? The sculptor's hands would bend against clay. The musician's ears would melt without sound. 
Oh, that the writer's pen would stumble in slumber as dancers would lay dead in the dawn. This shell, this tissue that we abuse, it may not say all that is the truth of us. It may all, in fact, be a lie, but it is here. It is what these eyes see. So let it lure me to where you stand, that I may hold you in these human hands, where dreams exile themselves to secrets in the madness of midnight endless nights that break material dawns. Let me confess my love for you. So many secrets that we would keep from the open minds of children would we dare dress a flower before their naked eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's what <laughs> I got you. That's what. That's very, what. very beat, very beat. Very beat. Yes, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, I know nobody applauds right here in the studio, so, so I want you so, to acknowledge. Yeah, but yes, I want you to know. I that. acknowledge that this, this is clapping in poetry. Yes. Yeah, you know, and 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 you know, like the the the, the compliment that, that that people when a, when people get a poem. I call it UPA, uh, Universal Poetry Appreciation. It goes, mmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I got that, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have a party. We are going to have a party. And, and you know, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm always, like, excited to have you here. I mean, I, the Good. last time mm -hmm. I had you on here, I think, um, unfortunately, I wasn't here because I was giving birth to Trump that's, either. That's right. That's right. But we still had you on. It was a hot, sunny day. It's a cold, rainy day, and here we are. <laughs> here we are. Right. But <laughs> the idea is that we continue moving forward. We continue supporting each other. You yeah, continue listen. creating your, your craft. And um, the fact that it's now in book form, now Thank it's accessible you. to people. And, and you're also showing this other side of yourself. And I'm blessed to be one of the artists that's going to yeah, read no, for we, you. Right. You will be there at Art Space on... Uh, Next next Thursday, a week a week from today. And before we go, we have Indio Melendez reading for yes. you, Victor Cruz reading for you, uh, um, Belange Rodriguez. Um, I'm trying to name everybody. Ivan Goris, uh, um, uh, <laughs> Elliot Ortiz, Ortiz and Aneris Mor uh, uh, Morales, who actually translated the poems into Spanish. Lovely. So so it's. We can tell them it's at Art Space next yes. week. Uh, Six to nine. El Barrio's Art Space, PS109 in El Barrio, which is 215 99th Street, um, where we actually live. And uh, we have a great gallery there. And we're going to have a nice time. Oh, we're and there's going to be a jazz band, too. For jazz and piano. Because we're going to be jazzing it out. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a fun, it's a book that I want. Like I think maybe like dudes could read to their... Women and women could read to their men, you know. And yeah. It's it's I it's 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 bisexual. It's bisexual. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And not only that, it's right before Valentine's Day, so it's a nice creative gift to provide outside, uh, aside from the the typical chocolate and uh, and teddy bears. Yes. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. But you guys, you're invited to Papoleto's poetry book party presentation with jazz. They're going to have a live jazz band and some wine and cheese reception. That's right. And that's going to be taking place on February 13th from 6 to 9 p.m. at El Barrio's Art Space, PS 109, located at 215 East 99th Street. And that's between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Um, and, yeah, you're all invited. And it's going to be a party. So don't miss it. All right. We got to take a quick break. But when we return, we'll hear what the Lehman Center has lined up for the 2020 season. Don't go anywhere. Praise the Lord. I'm Evangelist Barbara Mayo. I have a program called The Great God. I come on every Saturday at 3.30, channel 70 and 36 on file. You need to catch me because it's a, current, uh, a program to encourage, to lift up. And if you don't know anybody that uh, 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 haven't heard about the program, tell them about it. They'll be encouraged, for God is good. God bless you.
welcome back to Open Everyone. You know, always inviting you to get social with us. That's right. Tweet us at uh, Bronxnet TV. And while you're there, tweet me too, at Karina Valentin. So the Lehman Center for the Poor, well, excuse me, the Lehman Center for the Performing Arts and Goya Foods are celebrating 40 years of excellence with its Latinx series and featuring great artists such as Elvis Crespo, uh, Hector Costa, Manny Manuel, Grupo Nietzsche, and La India, and that's just to name a few. And joining us to tell us about the Latinx series and the newly $15.4 million renovated concert hall, we welcome Lehman Center for the Performing Arts Executive Director, Eva Bornstein. Hello. Hello, hello. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, happy Valentine's to so. you as well. <laughs> you are absolutely magnificent. I mean, the job that you have done thus far at Lehman all these years, up until this $15.4 million <laughs> renovation, Eva... I got to tell you, it has been my absolute honor to present you here on our set every year just to show the progression. I mean, your commitment and dedication is priceless. It really is. Congratulations. Thank you, Rina. I really, really appreciate your appreciation for everything we do at Neiman Center. You know, it's a team effort, obviously. Uh, Lehman College has become very supportive of Lehman Center. And we are grateful to them for fantastic renovation of the concert hall. Uh, Lehman Center really represents Bronx in fantastic light right now. And it's so beautiful. You have it, to check it out. I know you it's must. stunning. I mean, we just showed an image of it, but that really doesn't do it justice. You have to come yes. to the actual place. I mean, I, you made it eco-friendly, uh, right? Right, and, right. Um, and, and, and also we are ADA compliant, which means that now people, handicapped people, will have access to their seats. We have elevators. We have new washrooms, big, big time, very important for ladies especially, because we had huge lines I know, always. I was going to say that. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's every really every theater has huge lines to the bathrooms. So you've accommodated uh, minimizing the line? Right, right. We added uh, new bathrooms. And, you know, we added fantastic office space for my staff and myself, which is very important. Absolutely, when you're there right. all the time, exactly. right? Exactly. And not only that, we have windows now. I know. I was going to say, is your office sunny? Because the building itself yes. looks like you don't need electricity during exactly. the day. Exactly. No, it's beautiful. I overlook beautiful campus of Lehman College. It's, yes. it's a pleasure. Oh, i got to come visit you in the yes, office. Yes. All right, so let's talk about the... Coffee the, on us. Uh, coffee on you. All right. Yes. You heard that here on set. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Let's talk about the 2020 concert series. Oh, yes. my goodness. You guys get yes, them lined yes. up. Yes, this is 40th anniversary season. Congratulations so on that. So it's fantastic. And we're going to be celebrating it the best way we know how which is with great super duper artists. <laughs> that's what we do best. I know, it's amazing, the artists that you get here. I, th yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, it's been my absolute pleasure to be a part of it, and you know, whatever small contribution we've been able to provide yes. in, in just supporting uh, your series and, yes. and, and just sharing with the, the Bronx, uh, everything that's right here um, in your backyard. I mean, uh, I understand February 15th, the Love Weekend. You have uh, Hector Acosta. Yeah, I'm calling it the Love Weekend. You know, yes, Friday's yes. Um, Valentine's Day. So. El Torito. El Torito. <laughs> Hector Acosta. Hector Acosta. And guess what? You guys, we have two pairs of tickets we're going to be giving wow, away. Wow. I'm going to give you the details right. on that at the end of the segment, so hang on. Because we want to share this 2020 season, well, as much as we possibly as much can. In because a short we're not going to be able to go through yes. the whole year. But, um, we start with Han, Han, um, I'm sorry, Hector, which is this Saturday, and then you have Manny, right? It, Manny Manuel. Uh, actually, it's going to be next Saturday. Val isn't Valentine's Day? What, what's today? Seven? Yeah. The Hector's going to be next Saturday. Next yes. Saturday. Yeah, yes. next the Saturday. The 15th. Yeah. Yes, right. February 15th. Valentine's weekend. Right. That's what I said. The so it's weekend. easy to remember. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and then um, I know we're going to have uh, the Freestyle Forever, right? Which is That's going to be like 15th already. That's anniversary. Wow, that's amazing. And it's you know that Freestyle, we don't even have to put the lineup. 
people just buy their tickets because they know it will be sold out. So they're getting them way in advance. They don't even care who is going to be performing. You know, we always yeah, it, because uh, mm. honestly, it's a it's a, a classic. It, it's what I've always considered the urban classics, yes. uh, and it's just really reminiscent of right. a certain era. Era, and yes. People love it, and you know. I would like to thank the producer of this show because he has been so consistent selling out freestyle year after year, Mr. Sal Abatiello, who is going to be, by the way, honored by uh, the Bronx. He's going to go on a wall of fame. Yay! This, this oh my year. gosh, that's so wonderful. It's so, so Sal, our famous Bronx. Celebrity, he's Thank gonna you. be back. Uh, he's finally gonna make it yes, to the Bronx Walk yes. of Fame. He so de he deserves it. He it's deserves so well it. earned. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so happy you mentioned yes. it here on set. Thank you. Um, and so, but let's talk about the concert. No, I'm not to you know shy away from Sal. We love Sal too. We love. We love Sal. having him as, as well. And so. he's going to appear on your show. I'm sure. I'm sure he he appears he every year as well. Comes. Absolutely, absolutely. We love you guys. And and uh, again, we're here to support all, all of our efforts here Thank in the you. Bronx. Thank you. And so. So, but I do want to make sure that people know that there are other artists that are going to be presented yes. here at Lehman Center for the Perf Performing Arts. We've got La India coming. We've got Manny Manuel coming. You know, she's called the Queen of Salsa, you know. The, yeah, the princess. The princess. The princesa. La princesa. La India. La India. She's, yeah, she's another one that's kind of breathtaking. It's yes. It's one of those things that you have to be there to witness and Exactly, experience. and you need to buy tickets in advance for La India because she sells out also. Yeah, La India needs to be bought in advance, yeah. and she's going to be performing May 9th, and I'm sure the tickets are already going on sale. Oh, they're already half sold. They're already half sold. Ouch. And so who yeah. else uh, do we need to mention? Because, again, we're not going to be able to go over the entire calendar. We're just giving you guys a little taste little of place. what's going yeah. on uh, from here, I guess, until the summer. Right. So we're trying to reach out to diverse Latino community. And we, from Colombia, we're bringing Grupo Nietzsche. Oh, that's right. You got Grupo Nietzsche coming as Grupo well. Grupo Nietzsche and Mani Manuela. And Manny Manuel, which we mentioned, Manny Manuel is going up on April 11th. I don't exactly. know when Grupo Nietzsche is. Grupo, I Grupo think, is in March, right? In March, coming up in March. They're doing a big, huge national tour. And they're coming from Colombia to Bronx. Nice. To Lehman Center. Beautiful. And then Manny Manuel is in April. And um, again, we just gave you guys a little taste. And um, before we go, I do want to mention that while we did mention there's a $15.4 million renovation that occurred at Lehman Center, they actually are offering this opportunity where people can actually buy a seat and have their yes. names put on the seat, which yes. I think is so cool. Yes, and it's very priced very, very reasonably. And don't forget, you know, you could put a little cute message. Hello, Ava. Hello. Thank you for your good work. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or, or you can name it after a, a loved uh, one. Yes, loved one, whatever you, you know, your heart desires. It's going to be forever because the last seats lasted 40 years, so you can imagine. And this is brand new, so it I think it's a wonderful new. opportunity. Exactly. And I wanted to make sure I shared it with you guys, our viewers, especially if you're always at Lehman. Wouldn't it be cool to sit in a seat that's named after your loved one or, and or yourself? Exactly. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you once again, Eva, for bringing you here. Yes. And uh, for the work that you guys are doing. I always look forward to being at Lehman Center for the Performing yes. Arts. And you guys, now I'm going to give you the opportunity to win your free tickets. We have two pairs. So that would be for two people to Hector Acosta, which is happening on February 15th, the Love Weekend. And all you got to do is be the first two people to email me at rena at bronxnet.org. rena at bronxnet.org. And, bueno, we'll see. Good luck. And to get your more ticket information and for the Latinx series and celebrity series, which we didn't mention, but again, you can just go to Lehman Center for the Performing Arts Center.org. That's Lehman Center.org. And, or you can also call Lehman Center's box office, which is 718-960-8833. All righty, so, um, well, the NBA trade deadline um, dominated the headlines Thursday, and uh, Bobby C. is going to give us the uh, rundown on that when we return. Don't go anywhere.
The NBA trade deadline dominated the headlines in sports on Thursday. The orange and blue are sellers, dealing arguably their best player at yesterday afternoon's trade deadline. The LA Clippers, Knicks, and Washington Wizards have agreed to a three-team trade that will land Marcus Morris and Isaiah Thomas with the Clippers. Jerome Robinson will join the Wizards, former St. John star and Queens native Mo Harkless, and a 2020 first-round pick will go to the Knicks. Likely the right move for New York, but the Knicks will need to refine their ability to make the right picks in the NBA draft come June. Doesn't matter how many selections you have, it matters more who you take with them. One thing is certain, Steve Mills won't be involved in the process moving forward. The Knicks plan to hire agent Leon Rose as president of basketball operations. Rose would replace Mills, who was fired on Tuesday. Rose's clients at CAA include NBA stars Joel Embiid, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and Carmelo Anthony. His previous clients included LeBron James and Allen Iverson. Other deadline deals included D'Angelo Russell to Minnesota for Andrew Wiggins, Andre Drummond to Cleveland, and Andre Iguodala to Miami. Sticking with blockbuster names, but moving from the association to the baseball diamond, the blockbuster trade that would send Mookie Betts and David Price to the L.A. Dodgers has hit a snag. The Red Sox, Jeff Passan of ESPN Reports, were spooked by the medical reports of one of the prospects from the Twins. That deal still likely gets done. Called that one on the show a couple of weeks ago, too, by the way, just saying. Dodgers have locked up Max Muncy, though. Ken Rosenthal reports that Muncy inked a three-year, $26 million extension with a $13 million club option for 2023. Bets off the, uh, you know, of the Red Sox is great news for the Yankees being gone, but the news was not that great on Tuesday for the Yankees. Yankees pitcher James Paxton will be out for three or four months, according to general manager Brian Cashman, after having back surgery. Paxton was supposed to be the number three starter for the Yankees. He underwent back surgery, according to Cashman. Paxton started having some back problems at the end of last season, but responded well to treatment until a setback last month. The lefty went 15-6 and six with a 3.82 ERA and 29 starts, his first with the Yankees. He won his previous 10 starts in a row and was 1-0 with a 3.46 ERA and three postseason starts, allowing five runs in 13 innings. Not bad at all. He'll be a welcomed addition come June. The summer will also welcome the return of fellow starter Domingo Herman once he returns from suspension. Yanks should be able to hold down the fort with Jay Happ and Jordan Montgomery in the back end of the rotation. Hard to believe it's been 40 years since the tragic passing of Yankee captain Thurman Munson. His name was uttered often the past couple of weeks with the tragedy of Kobe Bryant. Legends live forever. A star-studded lineup was honored at the 40th annual Thurman Munson Awards dinner at Pier 60 at Chelsea Piers in New York City on Tuesday night. Our BronxNet cameras got a chance to be part of the benefit for charity, which assists children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The honorees were New York Yankees standout second baseman Glaber Torres, Thurman's teammate and World Series champion Lou Pinella, New York Mets hard-hitting infielder J.D. Davis, former Mets captain and ace relief pitcher John Franco, and Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famer Nancy Lieberman. Here's more. Thurman was revered and, 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 and liked in this city. Uh, the fact that Diane has put in all that time and hard work uh, to keep this going, it's a tribute to her. And this charity uh, does a wonderful work here in the New York area. Uh, Diane has filled me on, on the things that they do, so it's a win-win for everybody. And uh, Diane's a special lady, believe me. <laughs> How much did you know about Thurman Munson coming into tonight? Mm, a lot. Uh, my first year in the, when, I, when I was rookie, I heard too many history about him, like he do um, our community in New York to the kids and everything. So it was amazing when I when I heard the news, uh, I got the award for me. Uh, I feel really great. And just try to continue to to Monson do it. And also when when he was playing with the Yankees, he was great. So i just, just try to do the same thing. For this, for my charity to build parks, we have 88 dream courts around the country. We have over almost 4 million children on our courts. We've sent 70 high school seniors to college. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like the first half, I was a poor kid with no father, no food, no heat, no electricity in Far Rockaway. I was hopeless and helpless, and people changed my life. And to be able to come back now, kind of polished up a little bit, and help other people, like learning, earning, returning, just give back, it's a really good feeling. 
Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. We kick off our NBA coverage at the start of the week with the Brooklyn Nets. Subpar game for snubbed all-star Devin Booker and the Suns. Final score, Nets 119, Suns 97. Karis LeVert had 29 points for Brooklyn in the win. The Nets continued their win streak in a victory over D. Rust, then with Golden State on Wednesday night. 129-88 final there. The Nets will be in Toronto Saturday night. That matchup will be followed by a game in Indiana on Monday night. We'll have more from the Nets locker room on Monday morning's show. The Knicks, meanwhile, took on Orlando at home Thursday night. Alfred Payton, 15 points, 9 assists, came up with a career-high 7 steals and a 105-103 win. Knicks have won 3 straight. Can't believe it. Gianna Bryant's school retired her number 2 basketball jersey on Wednesday night in a ceremony that paid tribute to her memory. Gianna, her father, Kobe Bryant, and seven others died when the helicopter they were flying in crashed in California last month. Students and staff of Harbor, Harbor Day School in Newport Beach took to the podium to talk in glowing terms about how Gianna had always been a leader and joy to be around. A memorial service celebrating the life of Lakers legend Kobe Bryant and his daughter will be held the morning of February 24th at Staples Center in L.A. There is significance in the date, which reflects the basketball jersey numbers worn by Kobe, number 24, and Gianna, number 2. Staples Center most recently has staged memorials celebrating the lives of entertainers Nipsey Hussle and Michael Jackson. In racing, the 14-year-old son of two-time Indy 500 winner Juan Pablo Montoya is set to make his single-seater debut this season. Look out for Sebastian Montoya in F4. The NASCAR season begins next weekend with the Daytona 500. The weekend for lovers will also feature a heartfelt NBA All-Star game in Chicago where there will be plenty of tributes for Kobe Bryant. Formula One would seek to reschedule the Chinese Grand Prix if it has to be postponed due to the coronavirus epidemic. According to Motorsport Managing Director Ross Braun, the high-profile race in Shanghai due to be broadcast to many millions of television viewers around the world is scheduled for April 19th. Rena, the virus now affecting my racing. No bueno. I guess when you haven't won the Super Bowl in 50 years, things can get to fans' heads just a bit. Kansas City police nearly opened fire at a man who led officers on a car chase down the KC Chiefs Super Bowl parade route Wednesday morning. Police Chief Rick Smith said on Thursday, ultimately officers instead used a tactical maneuver seen there to end the chase blocking the car in before it could reach crowds gathered near Union Station. Well, I may not have, you know, racing in China arena, but there's always Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. But my favorite post-Super Bowl story is definitely this one. The fallout from the Super Bowl 54 halftime show continues with one man so shook from seeing the skin of Jennifer Lopez and Shakira that he plans on suing the NFL, Pepsi, and his local cable company. A Christian activist who is clearly trying to get attention for a podcast he hosts has announced that because viewing the halftime show in which J-Lo and Shakira gyrated for about 15 minutes could put him in quote-unquote danger of hellfire. The Ohio native who claims he turned off the halftime show because he didn't want to let the spirit in his house is angered by the crotch shots and took to Facebook to ask for a lawyer to help him file a lawsuit. Where's David Lesh when you need him? This weekend, the XFL gets rolling in its reboot, folks. The New York Guardians play their first game at MetLife Stadium 2 p.m. in the Meadowlands on Sunday. In the UFC, John Jones returns to the Octagon Saturday night in Houston, Texas. He'll take on Dominic Reyes in the light heavyweight main event, UFC 247. How about some more primetime TV? In an interview with MLB Network's Tom Verducci, former Astros manager A.J. Hinch made his first public comment since his dismissal last month as a result of MLB's investigation into illegal sign stealing by the club. The entire interview will be aired tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time on MLB Network. But in a preview that aired on Thursday, Hinch addressed the repercussions of the scandal, which included a suspension for him for the 2020 season. Pinocchio, Pinocchio. New York Mets fans are stuck with the Wolpons indefinitely. Billionaire Steve Cohen, who was expected to take majority control of the team following the 2024 season, has reportedly told the franchise he wants to back out of the deal after the Wilpons attempted to change its terms, according to the New York Daily News. Rob Manfred, MLB's commissioner, said on Thursday that as far as he knew, there is not going to be a transaction, quote, unquote. Mets can't seem to catch a break. We hit the C-list, one former baseball star asking for a break and another saying that one team doesn't deserve one.
Pete Rose asked Commissioner Rob Benfred on Wednesday morning to remove his name from Major League Baseball's ineligible list, which would allow the all-time hits leader to be considered for induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame at Cooperstown. In a petition sent to the MLB Commissioner's office and obtained by ESPN, Rose and his lawyers argue that Manfred has recently opted not to punish players guilty of major game-changing rules and fractions and as a result should end Rose's 30 and a half year ban for gambling on baseball while he was manager of the Cincinnati Reds provides a good question here who did worse Rose players who took performance enhancing drugs or the players involved in these sign stealing schemes by the 2017 Houston Astros for more Rose should be included in the Hall of Fame yet you know I would wait until he passes away, actually. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, just not to be celebrated while he's alive. That's just my two cents. And perhaps the same for the known steroid cheats. I believe Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens deserve enshrinement someday. Maybe Rose has long waited long enough. Baseball can do the same with Bonds, Clemens, and others. Or they can, you know, do what maybe the real home run king thinks that they should do with the Astros. Hank Aaron, one of Major League Baseball's greatest living icons, has a take about the cheating scandal that will raise some eyebrows in Texas. In an interview that aired Thursday, Aaron was asked by the Today Show's Craig Melvin if he thought the punishments were fair in the sign-stealing scandal. Aaron's take, quote-unquote, no, I don't think, he said. I think whoever did that should be out of baseball the rest of their life. At the end of the day, that might be a home run of a take after all. So maybe no Cooperstown for Rose or the steroid cheats and maybe no baseball for the Astros either. It is an interesting, you know, thought to ponder, Rena. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Welcome back. It's now time for this week's Open Artist Spotlight. This week's Open Artist Spotlight features Panamanian artist who's been in the music scene for over 20 years. He's been listed on the Latin billboard holding a number 19 position and selling over 60,000 copies with his first single, What Is Happening? And he's here now to bring us something fresh and new, performing Soy Tuyo. Please welcome Sammy P. El Conde. Baby girl. Yo te quiero, baby girl, te deseo, baby girl, te quiero abrazar y más nunca soltar y por eso, baby girl, yo te quiero, baby girl, te deseo, baby girl, te quiero abrazar y más nunca soltar y por eso, 
Yo solo vine a hablar de sentimiento Algo que ya se está perdiendo Eres tú la que me gustas más Y yo no quiero cambiarte nada Cuando te veo yo no sé qué decir Tu sonrisa a mí me hace a mí sentir Cosa bonita que me hace a mí vivir Por eso tú eres la chica para mí Baby girl, yo te quiero Baby girl, te deseo Baby girl, te quiero abrazar Y más nunca soltar Y por eso Baby girl, yo te quiero Baby girl te quiero abrazar y más nunca soltar y por eso yo solo quiero que me dé tu tiempo para enseñarte mi movimiento. Yo sé que no te arrepentirás y tú vas a volver por más. Cuando me tocas yo me voy a derretir en tus labios que me gustan tanto a mí. Yo soy el chico que te pone a vivir, por eso vengo y canto para ti. Y no quisiera que eso nunca cambiara, girl. Soy tu Tú eres la única que quita mis ganas, girl. Soy tu Eres la única que quiero en mi cama, girl. Soy tu Por eso eres tú mi chica especial, girl. Baby girl, yo te quiero, baby girl. Te deseo, baby girl. Te quiero abrazar y más nunca soltar y por eso, baby girl, yo te quiero, baby girl, te deseo, baby girl, te quiero abrazar y más nunca soltar y por eso. <risa> Exactly. Perfect. And you know what? I wasn't thinking until it happened. I said, wait, you, you know what? Valentine's Day is coming, and this song is just perfect. It is perfect. It was just an inspiration I had. And I wrote the song a couple of months ago, uh -huh. and I put it in paper, and there it is. That's it. So, so we, you presented it here first? Exactly. Oh, lovely. Yep. I was saving it for you. You're saving it for me. Of course. Uh, you <laughs> me, uh, that's me on air. And you're wearing red, too. <laughs> of course. Oh, it's uh, okay. Go Red Day. <laughs> I, well, That's brown is close, it's close okay. enough. Well, okay. you know, it matches your skin. It's okay. all good. So, Soy Tuyo is not available online yet? Yes, in yet? every it platform. Is. You can okay. find it in Spot, uh, you know, Spotify, it, Spotify by Apple, everywhere. iCloud. Yes. iCloud everywhere. All yes. of them, right? Mm -hmm. So then, good. We've got our theme song for Valentine's Day. All right, and where do you want people to follow you? Well, they could follow me on Instagram at SP, lower dash, El Conde, or Facebook. Uh -huh. uh, Sammy P, or they could go to my official page, it's sammypielconde.com, sammypielconde.com. Are you performing anywhere live? Mm -hmm. Soon. Soon? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah, well, yeah. he's like, soon, when the soon. weather warms up. Well, <laughs> well, I don't have no, nothing, I know there's a couple of things, but not, they could go to my page. Right. And everything's going to be updated. Right, to keep updated, to keep on, updated on, your, updated. on your live performances. Uh, yes, but definitely. in the meantime, they could check you out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You can check them out here on Open, oh, right? Definitely. And definitely uh, download well, the song. I do know I'll be flying in April to Madrid. To Madrid? Yes, I'll be going to Madrid soon. And um, I have other places there that I'm going to go soon too, which they could go to my page and check it out, semipielconde.com. Beautiful. Gracias. Mucho gra gracias a ti. Yeah. Okay, All right, it. you guys, once again, for more on Sammy P. El Conde, you can visit sammypelconde.com. That is our show today, mi gente. Thanks to all our guests gracias. for coming through. And to you, our viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of the show, you can check out the Recable Cast tonight and 24 hours a day at bronxnet.tv. I'm Rina Valentin. And from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide paz, prosperity, y amor. As you can see, the show is filled with much, much love. Mucho, mucho amor. Mucho amor. 
And, uh, bueno, Sammy P. El Conde is going to rock us out uh, to the end of the show. So, happy Valentine. I know Valentine's February 14th, but this is our Valentine, our pre-Valentine show. We hope we uh, started to give you some ideas on how to celebrate. Definitely listening okay. to Sammy P. El Conde. Soy tuyo. Soy tuyo. <laughs> Woo! Yo sé que ya no crees en el amor, pero tengo la esperanza que algún día lo vuelvas a hacer. Soy tuyo. Y no quisiera que eso nunca cambiara. Soy tuyo. Tú eres la única que quita mis ganas. Que soy tuyo. Eres la única que quiero en mi cama. Que soy tuyo. Por eso eres tú mi chica especial. Mi al baby. Te quiero abrazar y más nunca soltar. 